should you run a RV on a hurricane? So there's a couple of layers to this. Um, I would say that if you have done a storm before or, or several storms and you've got kind of like a system for how you operate yourself, how you feed yourself, how you refuel, how you do your logistics and everything, and you're like, you know what, I can get an RV into this, go for it, right? If also, if you are an experienced RVer, right, that you've owned RVs in the past, whether it's a travel trailer, a motorhome, Sprinter, whatever, and you know how to um, be comfortable in an RV, all the little things that can go wrong in an RV, the things that you gotta stay on top of, like your water and stuff like that. If you already know how to do RVing really well, and this is, you've never done claims before, um, I would say proceed with caution. Um, and here are the reasons why I say this, right? So if you've never done claims before, I'm just gonna kind of like give you spoiler alert the, the end at the beginning here. But basically, if you've never done claims before, in particular, if you've never owned or like run an RV yourself, like you've never gone on like a vacation with your family or had one in the driveway that was yours, um, I'm gonna tell you not to do the RV thing. The main reason why is because as a new person, number one, you're, it's, it's an expense, right? They're expensive. Um, you have to have a tow vehicle or a vehicle that you tow. Um, and I'm gonna get into why I don't recommend doing the Sprinter van thing here in a second, but um, it's expensive to get up and running to do something that you're not sure maybe you wanna even keep doing after your first storm, right? You might get to the end of your first storm and be like, there is no way in God's green earth I'm ever doing that again, right? Um, I actually said that at the end of my first storm and then I was back and then did it for 20 years. So there's exceptions to that, but it may be that you're like, you know what, that just absolutely wasn't worth the money that I made. It's too hard, it was too hot, it was too, um, it's just, I can make better money doing something easier and that I enjoy more, right? And, but then you've got this expensive RV, you know, you can rationalize it and be like, oh, well, you know, we'll take family vacations or whatever, but you know, you're gonna end up selling it, it's gonna sit in the driveway forever. You know, you, you'll forget to winterize it and then it'll freeze and then you'll go to fill it up with water in the spring and water will spray out of every crack and, you know, hole and all the cabinets, everything, because of the, the water lines busted. A million things can go wrong with, with the RVs. I live full-time in an RV over probably a grand total of maybe 10 or 12 years. And we did, I did a fifth wheel toy hauler, I did a fifth wheel, a regular fifth wheel, and we'd lived in a motor home for a number of years. So I know about RVs and all the little quirky, irritating things that can happen with them, right? So the other reasons why I'm gonna try to steer you away from using an RV, especially on a hurricane, um, is because learn how to become an independent property claims adjuster with my free online course at adjustertv.com slash start. There's um, and I'll get to the Sprinter thing in a second. I want to hit that, but I'm going to regular RV first, right? So if you've got a pickup truck and a, a, a toy hauler or a trailer, bumper tow, fifth wheel, whatever it is, um, you have the logistics of trying to find a campground, right? Surprisingly, you, it's, I found it a lot more challenging to find a good RV campground in like a major metro area or near a city than like just in a little small towns out in the middle of nowhere. I don't know why. Um, and a lot of times if you're anywhere near a, like a beach or a major tourist destination, the price for a lot of times the price for RV campground fees is close to a hotel, right? Um, they are nice to have, and there's certain pros to this, but I'm going to talk and I talk about the, the cons because I kind of want to talk you out of that for your first storm. Um, right. So if you have to move, this is another problem, right? They might say, Hey, you know, Pete, we're going to send you to, uh, Mobile, Alabama and stage you up there, right? You got your RV with you. You don't know how long you're going to be in Mobile because the storm didn't hit Mobile. So we had a hurricane that hit Houston and then you had a hurricane that hit Miami. Right. So you don't know where you're going to go. So now you got this RV and you're probably staying in a Walmart parking lot, right? Or Cabela's or something like that. And you're filling up your black and gray tanks and you're emptying your fresh water tank. You have power considerations, right? To run your laptop and all that kind of stuff. So that there's logistics that come with RVs that you're not, you're just not going to have with the hotel. It's really my bottom line point on that. You know, they may say, all right, we need you to go to Houston, right? And so you get halfway to Houston and then they say, nope. We're sending you to Miami. So you got to turn around and drive. And this, whether you've got an RV or not, this, this can and, and may happen to you. 
send you to, over to Miami. You get to Miami, they give you 20 claims, and then you get all settled into an RV campground, right? You find one, and it's it's not it's you know 90 minutes from your from your your claims, right? Because you're not gonna be able to get close to the the really ravaged areas, and you get 20 claims or 30 claims or 40 claims, and then they say. And then another hurricane hits North Carolina, right? And then they say, hey, listen, you know, um, we want to send you up to North. I mean, anything can happen, right? So now you got to pull up stakes, roll up the hoses and trundle yourself up all the way up the coast with your RV. They are heavy, expensive, the fuel's expensive for them, right? I mean, if you can get more than 10 or 12 miles to the gallon with any kind of an RV, then you're doing really, really, really well. Um, you're doing something different than I ever did. Anyway, um, as far as the sprinter van things go, things uh, situation goes, is that a lot of people they get it in their head, and it makes sense. I, you know, I, I've totally, you know, when you first think about it, you're like, oh, why don't I just do this? Why don't I get a sprinter van, and you know, I'll customize it or whatever, or I'll set it up to where I can do have a little desk area in there and put a ladder rack on the top or on the side or something, and then I'll just like drive to my claims in the RV, the Sprinter, uh, do my claims there, and at the end of the day, I'll just go park at a campground or or pull around the corner and just go to sleep in the neighborhood in my RV or go to a nearby Walmart and park. Um, the number one problem with that is, is that that's dangerous, right? And, and I often hear people say that they're either going to or they have slept in their cars. Um, you're making enough money to where you can afford a hotel. If you don't want to have the expense of a hotel or the, the higher expense of like a extended stay or whatever, then get like a a Motel 6 or something like that, right? Where if you're just gonna eat TV dinners, go buy yourself a $50 microwave and just eat TV dinners, right? Um, you can make that work. If you're by yourself in an RV in a neighborhood, you don't know what neighborhoods you're gonna be sent to, right? The nicest neighborhood could have some little rabble-rousing teenagers running around in it with nothing better to do than to slash your tires or bang on your windows at two o'clock in the morning or you know some you know nosy neighbor who's out walking her dog calling the cops because there's some strange van parked out there right I, I don't recommend doing that for a bunch of reasons um, not the least of which is dangerous Walmart um, sometimes they have day limits like they'll say well you can stay here for three days or you can stay here for 15 days um, you, then you you're still with either one of those situations you're still running into the logistical problem with the RV because even with a sprinter van it's the same thing as a, as a travel trailer or motorhome where you got to go right number one and two and that goes into a place that gets full and especially on a smaller rv it's going to be a smaller tank so it's going to fill up faster and then you've got gray gray water which is your shower and your sink right That's, those are going to fill up very very quickly even in our, our big motorhome that we had we could fill up the gray tank in two or three days easily especially if we were taking shot we're taking, I mean, you could like certainly manage it, but you got to take a shower, especially if you're in Houston in July and August. Come on, you're going to be sweating your rear end off, right? And you're going to smell, you're going to need a shower every day. Probably two, right? Because it's going to be hot and sweaty. So you have your water, wastewater situation that you have to have sorted and you can't just dump it out on the side of the road. Somebody sees you do that, they're going to call the cops. It's against the law in a lot of places, um, especially gray water but it's absolutely it gets a lot anywhere and it's just bad just don't do it to dump your black water tank with the, the stuff that's in the black water tank anywhere except for an rv dump right um but then you have fresh water right so you have to have fresh water in order to be able to take these showers and run your toilet and to have water to drink you know i mean you can go buy a gazillion things of water bottles long story short on this um you are you've got logistics that you have to deal with. If you say, oh, well, then I'll just stay at a campground. The problem with that is, with your little sprinter, the problem with that is, is that in order to take advantage of the benefits of a campground, you got to back it in, you got to you hook up your wastewater line, right? Your, your number two dump, you got to, which is going to be connected to your number your black and your gray are going to both dump together, right? You got to hook power back up. You got to hook the water back up. You got to put the jacks on, get everything leveled out, right? Then everything that you, when you're driving around during the day, anything that's sitting on the counter or sitting out on your little kitchenette or whatever, anywhere is going to end up on the floor. If it's 
if it's dishes and things like that, they're gonna they're gonna be they're gonna break, right? So, the beginning of the day, you have to completely clean your entire RV to where there's nothing loose that can like because you, as you're driving can fall down and break or cause a ruckus or whatever. And at the end of the day, you reverse that, right? So now you get your dishes out and you cook yourself dinner and you've got a plate and a bowl and you know some silverware or whatever. Maybe your little nonstick skillet. And now you, gotta, you have to clean that and put it away. You can't just throw it in the sink. Otherwise, it's going to be rattling around in there all day long. The next day when you're out in the field, it's going to smell. Little flies are going to find it. Just go get a hotel, okay? It's, it's, it's a necessary expense. Um, it's so much easier when they say, hey, stage in Mobile, okay, Motel 6. We'll just stay there for, for three nights or however many nights, four, six. You don't have any idea where the, how long you're going to be there, right? And then... They send you to Houston and you get a bunch of claims down in Galveston, but then a bunch more. They, somebody, somebody, other adjuster leaves, ten, you know, eight days into the storm and they say, all right, we need you to go to, to um, Conroe, right? Which is all the way on the whole other side of the, the city, right? So you're not going to drive six hours one way every day commute, especially in Houston. It's, it's hard enough to get around that city without making, giving yourself like a really long commute, right? So you're going to have to pull up stakes, just throw yourself back in your bag and grab your whoopee and your pillow that you brought with you, check out of your hotel and go grab another you know, extended stay or a stay bridge or a motel six or whatever it is in Conroe, close to your claims, right? Um, so that's my answer for that. If, like I said, if you've got experience with RVs and you know how to do all this stuff with RVs and you know how to drive them, how to park them, how to back them, how to, you know, if you get, if you're new with RVs, and this is a big one, and you, you're, you're driving on your way from Kansas City down to Mobile, you're going to be stopping for gas, um, you know, depending on the size of the, the vehicle that you got and how big the gas tank is and your fuel economy or whatever, you're going to be stopping several times, right? If you get into a gas station and you're not planning how you're going to get out of the gas station, then you're scraping your top of your thing on the side of the thing, you're hitting the, the yellow post with your tires, you're scratch. You know, you're having to try to back out and people are like, you know, everybody's moving away and somebody's guiding you or whatever. It's a, there's a little bit of a skill and a little bit of a learning curve to, to being an RV owner. <clears throat> Do that on your own after you've done this season. I would say maybe even like next season or maybe you get halfway through like 2025 season and you're like, you know what? I think I got this nailed. Let's buy an RV because I want to try to, I, I think I could work it out to where it'll actually save money instead of being, you know, a truck payment and an RV payment, which is going to be more than your hotel every month or, or equal to plus the fuel and all the rest of the stuff you've got to deal with with that uh, propane gas, right? A lot of, most of them, all of them that I know of have a propane, another cost, right? So RVs, um, after you've been doing it a while, and if you decide to go full-time as an RVer, which I recommend, um, you, you know, sell your house, sell most of your stuff. The app thinks that you absolutely know that when later on, when you decide you're done full-timing, you're going to put back in a, in a new house or that you buy or build, put those in storage, get a little storage unit and just like that, that's the limit of the stuff. Everything else is going to go, you know, six years from now when we're done full-timing, I'm going to have different tastes and furniture and whatever, right? Um, get a motorhome. Right. Don't get a sprinter. Don't try to full time in a sprinter because you're going to the, the beauty of having like a, a like a diesel motor home is that it's got all that storage underneath. So you can have Christmas decorations. You can have your pool to toys under there. You can have extra supplies. You can have extra food. You can have your sort of your a little bit more creature comforts with with the motor home. Right. But they're ridiculously expensive um, unless you go buy a really old one like we did. And then you're spending a bunch of money on fixing it up. Find out how you can get free access to my complete online course on how to become a highly paid independent insurance adjuster right here.